Okay. Well, our dinner didn't tell you all. You did ask me to teach for him a couple weeks ago. As long as he doesn't think that I fired him like someone else. I know. <laughs> Y'all hear me good? Mm -hmm. I was, you remind me, I was talking to Brother Kraft Thursday night. We were talking about birthdays, and I mentioned how me and Brother Rich shared the same birthday, but 60 years apart. I told him how you know, I miss him sometimes, but I'm sure he's not missing down here. Amen. Well, I know we miss our loved ones that have gone on, but I'm sure they're not missing this world too much. Mm -hmm. We'll go to Luke chapter 18. I'm sure we've all heard this passage before, especially the, the first verse seems to be quoted quite a bit. Uh, we'll look at verses 1 through 8. It says, And he, speaking of Jesus, spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint saying, There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Amen. Well, here we see Christ gives this parable of the unjust judge, as it's often called. It says, for the purpose that men ought always to pray and not to faint. That we ought to be a praying people. Amen. It says not to pain, not to be weary, not to be weak in spirit or in heart. But when we look to the things of this world and forget about God, if you will, we become faint, we can become weary. Well, this world will not really do us any good, will it? Amen. To look out in the world and it's discouraging, if you will. It's not a encouraging thing to see the Bidens in the White House, to see that wickedness abounds, to see that even in just north of the border of Canada, there's a pastor was arrested for right. just holding church services. Mm -hmm. So these things are not necessarily encouraging, but that's not what we are to look to. Amen. We ought always to pray, he says. He goes on in verse 2 to give us the parable, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Mm. So he is rightly called it an unjust judge. It says he regarded not man. If he had no respect for man. It implies that he had no care for those who he presided over. Yeah. But even more so, his problem was that he didn't fear God. Amen. There is very little fear of God in our present day. Proverbs 1 7 tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 9 10 tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Really, for anyone to have proper wisdom and knowledge, they need the fear of God. You're right. You're right. Really, for anyone who's in a position of authority, they need the fear of God to rightly rule. Yet there's really no fear of God before their eyes, as there is Romans 3.18 says. Amen. There's not any God-fearing, or not really many, I guess I could say, God-fearing men or women in places of authority today. You know, in our federal government, and our even down to our state and local governments, there's not very many people who actually fear God. Amen. I do think Bill Lee has some good intentions. He 
realize that church services were essential during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Unlike uh, our neighbors to the north. Right. But yet, I don't see much actual fear of God from these people. You're right. right. Anyway, that's not my. I want to point out really enough. <laughs> it says on the next verse, And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. You see this widow, the, really the lowliest of low in that time, mm -hmm. the, probably the poorest of poor. And so she came unto him, that is the judge. She brought this petition here to avenge me and my adversaries, to do justice on her part, if you will, to really means to punish her opponent, her enemy. So for us, Satan is our great adversary. Amen. First Peter 5, 8 tells us that our adversary, the devil, walketh about the roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Really, the world is full of adversaries to the child of God. Mm -hmm. Sin is our adversary. The wicked, in a sense, are our adversary. The world, in general, is our adversary. Mm -hmm. I don't mean that we are to hate them, that we're to you know, have no compassion towards the lost. That's not what I mean. But the world is not a friend to the child of God. You're right. And here she cries for vengeance, if you will, to to have this justice meted out on her behalf. Certainly God will bring vengeance for his people. Romans 12, 19 says, Vengeance belongs to me, I will pay, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. The modern day teaching is to get even, is to give back at someone who does you wrong. Right. But really, for the child of God, we ought to just let God do his work. You're right. He will get revenge, if you will. He will repay those who do his people wrong. And he can certainly be sure if it doesn't happen in this life, it will happen when they stand before him in judgment. Amen. I didn't write this in my notes, but I was just thinking about the when those were standing before him, and he said, you, you saw me hunger and you fed me not. Yeah. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. Mm -hmm. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. And I said, well, when do we do all these things to you, Lord? He says, well, you do it to the least of one of these, you're done with me. Right. And here, please avenge me of my adversary. But in those first four, it says in verse five, and he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. But he would not, for a while it says, he would not listen to her petitions, he would not even take up her case. So it says, afterward, he said within himself, Though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. So it wasn't that you know, he had pity on her, rather he was annoyed by her. Right. She just kept bothering him and bothering him until he finally granted her her wish. But the widow kept petitioning. That's the thing we ought to keep take note of there. She didn't just bring it to him once and say, Well, I guess that was enough. Mm. Just the same are we not to keep petitioning God? Amen. I don't mean that we just empty or vainly and empty repeat a prayer every day. You know, God is good. God is very thankful for this food. Amen. That's not mm. bringing our petition before Him. You're right. But it is not wrong to plead for those who don't know Christ. Amen. Continually. But it's not wrong to plead for you know, revival in our country and our churches. Just to pray for it once in passing and then leave it off. That's not the way God works, is it? Right. You know, just like the widow kept troubling 
the judge, we ought to trouble God, if you will. Lord, notice it did not happen immediately, did it? Right. She had to keep coming before him, keep mm -hmm. coming before him. And yet, eventually he heard. The difference, though, was that God always hears his children. Well, if this unjust, unjust judge finally granted her plea, does it not give us much greater hope as a child of God that Amen. God will hear us? He is the just judge. That's it. Well, this verse 6, he goes on to say, and The Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. If such a wicked, merciful, or merciless, and unjust judge who didn't care for God nor care for man, if he did justice for this little widow, then will not God do much greater for his own people? Amen. Hear what the unjust judge saith, he says. If God will hear us and even grant our request. Not to get ahead of our message here, but the problem is we lack faith. Going on to verse 7, it says, And shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear along with him? Amen. It's really kind of a rhetorical question, but he says, you know, after saying that this unjust judge would Grant this widow's plea that shall not God do it for his own people? Shall not God avenge his own elect of his chosen ones? So which cry day and night unto him. Do we really cry day and night unto him a little anymore? Mm. I'd say many, probably even sincere Christians, don't really cry unto him. We might say a prayer that ease our confidence if we will or we might say a prayer over our food we might you know, go through the routine that we do every day yet we're not really crying unto him are we? you're right and God always hears the prayer of his people when we earnestly seek him so I remind of First Kings 18 27 when Elijah was challenging the prophets of Baal to the when they brought the sacrifice they ended up on the altar they poured water all over it mm -hmm. and the prophets of Baal were crying to Baal and said come down and consume it and Elijah kind of mocked him and said perhaps he is mm -hmm. sleeping or right. busy doing something else that is not the God of the Bible though is it Amen. Well, Psalms 121 verse 4 says, He that keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is never too busy to take our request. You don't know, get a busy signal when you pray to God. Amen. He doesn't Amen. put you on hold either. Well, God hears the prayer of His people. Psalms 59 verse 1, I mean, excuse me, Isaiah 59 verse 1 tells us that his ear is not heavy that he cannot hear. Amen. Well, the problem is always with us. It's always we let sin come between us and God, or we let sin hinder us in our service for God. It's never that God is not hearing us, or that God is not able to hear us, or that he is not able to grant our request. Mm -hmm. And other times we, in a, our sinful nature, ask God, Wrongly, don't we? As James says, yeah, and have not because you ask me this, that you may consume it on your own lust. Mm. Well, either we don't ask, God doesn't bring it, or we don't ask the right way, if you will. We ask with our own selfish intentions. Going on to verse 8 here, it says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Here Christ answers his own question. As he will avenge them speedily, he says. Ultimately, our enemies will be defeated. Amen. 
That includes sin, Satan, and all that goes with that. All the enemies of this world as well. So that will end them speedily. The problem, oh, it's a problem, but God works on his, his time, not our time. That's it. Now, the speedily means quickly or shortly, but we think that means it's got to be right now. It means it's going to be immediately. Oh. I know God is able to grant our request as soon as we ask Him. He already knows we have need of Him before we ask Him. Amen. But that's not always His plan, is it? Mm -hmm. I, I like to read about the life of George Mueller. I'm, I'm sure most of you all heard of me. <laughs> Live the life of faith. I, I recall one instance, they had no food to eat. So they just sat down and prayed over this food that they didn't have. And by the time they got done praying, someone had showed up at the door with food for them. Amen. Well, that's real faith, isn't it? The God will provide. And it wasn't just him and his family, it was a whole orphanage full of kids. Mm -hmm. We get, on the other hand, Martha and Mary, they wanted Christ to come. And he didn't come right away, did he? Right. Lord, if you've been here, our brother had not died. Uh, <clears throat> no. In our flesh and minds, that makes sense, doesn't it? Christ should come, he should heal Lazarus, he should and all be well. But sometimes God has different plans, doesn't he? As we see with Lazarus. Yeah, something much greater than our minds can think of. Mm -hmm. No Christ or God, should I say, works on his time, not our time, whether it be immediately or whether it be what we perceive as four days late, <laughs> whether it be four years later, whatever it may be, yeah. we ought not to be discouraged because God doesn't just immediately grant our wishes. Right. He's not a genie in a bottle. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yet that's how many treat him today, though, isn't it? Yeah. Almost like they put him up on a shelf and bring him down when they want to. Right. Rub the bottle and he comes out and grants your wishes. Well, that's not the God of the Bible. Amen. Really, this last part of verse 8 is what got me thinking on this passage. And it says, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Hmm. We pose this question almost as an opposing idea of what he's just presented here. You know, he's talked about how we can go to God, how he will really hear us, and how he will grant our petitions. And yet he says, well, well, considering all this, when the Son of Man comes, will he even find faith on the earth? Well, that's not the faith. I don't think that will ever disappear this side of eternity at least. There will always be some continuing for the faith. Amen. There might only be eight like in Noah's day. Or there might be eight million, I don't know. All right. But do we really have faith is the question here. Hmm. Do we really trust him? Do we really believe that he is able and will do what he has said he will do? Will there be any faith when Christ returns? It's definitely lacking in our day, isn't it? Let's turn over to Hebrews and I'll we'll draw us to a close. Hebrews chapter 11. We'll look at verse 1 and then verse 6. Here he gives the definition of faith in verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Well, faith, we could spend a whole lesson, probably a whole series on what is faith. But Amen. A little quick definition, if you will, a quick explanation, I guess you could say, is it's really our foundation and assurance. It's really the very essence of our hope, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And what is our hope? Well, it's found in Christ. It's the well, one of the things we hope for is that He will return, that He will deliver us fully from sin one day. Amen. 
when this body shall be glorified, when this mortal shall put on immortality, when this corruptible shall put on incorruption. Really then will our hope be brought to full fruition and really our faith will be fulfilled as well. Amen. He says it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Really, we need no other proof to the things of God than faith. So I like answers in Genesis and how they use science to show that creation, that the biblical creation is correct, and science, even agreeing with science. Mm -hmm. Yet I don't need any proof that creation Amen. is real. Amen. So many today want proof that there is God. They want proof that the Bible is correct. Faith is the only proof that it really matters. Amen. Mm -hmm. You can show someone all you want to. Yes, they don't have faith, they will reject it. That's right. Amen. That's why evolution is popular among many other false teachings. Because man cannot see the things of God without faith. As we'll see in verse 6 here. It says, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Well, we must have faith to be pleasing to God. And this is goes beyond just saving faith. Well, most of us in this room have saving faith, but do we really have faith in God? Enoch had this faith. Amen. It says in verse 5 that by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Amen. You can only have that testimony by having faith. Like I said, we, we have saving faith, but that's not enough to be pleasing to God. There are many today that have saving faith and aren't serving God very well, if you will. Right. So he says, For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. But first we have to believe that God is. Amen. That God is God, that he is who he says he is. That Jehovah is God, that Jesus is God, that the Holy Spirit is God. I don't think you can leave out any one of those and truly believe that God is. Mm -hmm. Amen. That he is the Almighty, that he is sovereign, that he is he that says that the heavens and do it according to his will. Really, if we don't believe that God is sovereign, then is there really any need to pray to him? That's it. He cannot bring to pass that which we request of him. We're wasting our breath, aren't we? You're right. Amen. But yet many of us I say we we say that God is sovereign, but we don't act like He is, do we? Right. We, I think we all here say that we believe that He is the Almighty, that He is the sovereign of all of creation. Yet, well, uh, I just don't know that God's going to do that. No, God is able to do really much more than we can even think of. Amen. In fact, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Right. Ephesians says. But second, we must believe that he will, if you will. That he not only is able to, but that he will do these. That is, if we diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, God grant me a quarter bed, and I know you will. He's going to drive up to our driver the next day. That goes back to what we mentioned in James. We cannot ask it that we might consume it on our own lust. We have to ask it being right with him, if you will. Amen. But diligently seeking him, that means it takes work, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That widow back in our text in Luke 18, she diligently sought before the unjust judge. We won't spend a lot of time on this, and our time is about out anyway. Psalms 119, verse 2 tells us we must seek him with the whole heart. Mm -hmm. 
In Isaiah 55, verse 6, it says, And we have to seek him while he may be found. In Psalm 63, verse 1, tells us that we are to seek him early. Mm -hmm. It can be early in life as well as early in the day. Mm -hmm. But we must diligently seek him. That is part of faith. That is part we seem to leave out sometimes. Though. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And God is able to provide all our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That doesn't mean you can just go be a bum somewhere and he's going to send our ravens to feed you. Amen. You know if that is what God has revealed that he's going to do for you, then he is able to send the ravens to feed you. Mm -hmm. He is able to rain down man from heaven to feed you. But we can't be presumptuous about what God is going to do. So here we must diligently seek Him. Seek to be right before Him. Seek to be in fellowship with Him. Seek to be pleasing to Him. Seek to honor and glorify Him. In seeking Him, we can't be seeking anything else, can we? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. I can't say I've ever went on a treasure hunt, but I know you can't be searching in Africa as well as in South America at the same time. It's just the same, we can't be seeking God and seeking the things of this world at the same time. Mm -hmm. but we must diligently seek God. Then he will grant our request. You know, we we have prayer and then we don't do anything about it. We sit around and wait for God to do something. All right. But what I, I know sometimes that's what we have to do. We have to wait on the Lord. But we can't just say, "Oh, well, God sends revival," and we sit here. Mm -hmm. Right. God's not going to send us revival. Well, we have a responsibility just the same. Amen. So I'll close with this thought. Do we have this faith? Well, I don't know when the Lord will return, but if we return today, I don't really find very much faith on the earth. Right. Amen. You know, there's a lot of God's people here. A lot of people that are even continuing for the faith, but not very many who actually have faith in Him. Mm. Amen. But we'll close with that thought. Amen.